Whoa. Can you see that? I don't know if you can, yeah, look at that. Looks like, it looks like water or electricity going pew. Hey, welcome back to Project Fix the Fox. Um, today we're taking apart the instrument cluster uh, to fix the LCD screen that's gone all funny. Um, so we've got these parts from, you know, I can't remember who they're from, but I'll link in the description. Um, and it's essentially uh, a ribbon which connects the LCD screen to the circuit board. Um, that's apparently what goes wrong on them. I'm hedging my bets, there might be something else, but hopefully when we take it apart, we'll take a look. Uh, the place I got it from also provided a guide, so that's really cool. And then, once the wheel trim's arrived, right, she'll be ready with a good clean. The tools you'll need to get the job done. A pry bar of some sort is useful, not necessary, along with plastic panel remover tools. Again, not necessary, you can do it with a flat blade screwdriver. You'll need that separately anyway. Then you'll need a T20 torque, soldering iron, and the little T-bar attachment, which solders all the contact strips at once. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, disconnect the battery. Pry this little plastic um, cover off, just on the right-hand side of the vent. Which looks like that. Then the next stage is just pry under here and try and force the air vent towards you. There you go, air vent comes out. Uh, the next thing is lower the steering wheel as low as it can go. Now the next thing is removing this plastic piece here. It's, there's two torques that are holding this plastic on. So get those off, it's a T20. Boom, two torques there. All right, now, hopefully, I say that with trepidation, uh, this should just pop out. Okay, look, this whole piece right up to here, that's one piece of plastic. Let's see, I think we can just get it out. There's one torque right at the top there, I think it'll probably be a 20 as well. Yep, take that one out. Let's see, it might be shorter. No, they're all the same, so don't worry about that. Now let's see, there's probably a couple connections. It's a little blue connector there, and you have to move the red lever up, and that should pop out. Yep, move that back, that pops out, and there you go. Next thing, I'm gonna be taking this apart, and that I'm gonna do at the desk so I don't lose anything. Hey, so we're here, we've got it off and we're at the desk, so we're gonna start trying to figure out how to take it apart. We've got a soldering iron here, a ribbon, tape, and we've got this little tool which we can put together now. First thing, let's get a screwdriver and there's some lugs. There you go. Where's the back off? Oh, that just simply comes off like that. The next phase is to get to the circuit board here. And to do that, we have to take all this front cover off. So the first thing is this plastic shrouding. And there's two clips here, which need to be push down. So we have to take the dials off. Whoa, there we go. Now the next stage is get these off. There we go. Second one down. Now 
Now I know that this one is glued down. Just take your time, be very slow. And there we go. That is very sticky actually. Now we can see the screens there. Move these lugs out of the way. There we go. So the screen's off. Now this plastic shrouding is held on here by four clips. There it is. Now there's a diffuser there. I've managed to not take that out, so I'm just gonna leave that there. I'm gonna put this to the side. Now the ribbon we've bought is here, and you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to catch it in the camera, but right here, it looks like the ribbon's breaking apart. So, with any luck, this is the issue. So I'm just gonna really gently pull this off. Right, that's pulled off and now I can tell I'm gonna need to clean all these contacts okay I figured out how to clean them these black strips here are your contact points and from what I've read these are carbon or at least carbon lined so you have to be really delicate and the glues all on the top of it now I thought they were all damaged because I could see silver bits, but that's from the tape itself, so don't worry. It actually has to come off the carbon and the carbon's underneath, so just be really careful. So what I've used is grab a cotton bud, and I've just laced it in this, um, well anything similar, any kind of alcohol-based or spirit-based thing I think will work. Um, I just happen to have that. And uh, yeah, it seems to be coming off as you can see here. So just take your time, it's taking me ages, but I want it to be nice and clean because there's no second chances here. There we go. Nice and clean. Completely clean at the bottom. Now, to line this ribbon up, there's super faint, and I, when I mean super faint, they really, really are faint. Shiny little lines on this back bit of the glass. Now, I think you need either like really bright sunlight or a torch and you can just about see them and you have to get it at the right angle and then you have to line this up so that the contact patches here line up with those contact patches. Now I'm going to turn on the soldering iron, wait 10 minutes so it's really nice and hot um, and I'll attach a T-bar to it and then we'll try and stick that to the LCD glass, fingers crossed. So after that, I attached the T-bar to the soldering iron and you can see there's a little rubber strip on top of the soldering iron which prevents the ribbon from burning. So it's not a direct metal contact to the ribbon, the heat dissipates and spreads more evenly. My eyesight wasn't good enough so I had to actually go and buy a magnifying glass so the next day, two days later, I had another go. Hold it on there for 15 seconds and it should be good. So here we are. I couldn't fix the Fox's dash. Um, I tried two of those ribbon strips and they didn't work out. So I sent them off to this company, which I found on the internet. It's called Revtronic. Anyway, really professional, good price, 80 pounds. Whatever the problem is, they'll fix it and they give you a guarantee as well. And I'll show you now. They've put this little seal on it, it's like a warranty seal, uh, so you can't tamper with it. And we'll plug it in tonight and see if it works, I'm sure it will, and I should have just done that at the beginning, but I'm glad I gave it a go. Uh, there's only three components that could have been broken, the ribbon, the LCD screen, or the unit itself, um, and I'm sure it was probably the LCD screen. I messaged it around, I couldn't find anyone who was just selling the LCD screen separately, or was willing to help me out there, so this was the solution. And there we have it, fully working. You can finally see the miles, I don't know if you can, 
48,877, so super low mileage. Oh, what a relief. And we'll check the lights. There we go. Wow, what a terrible noise. But they work. Absolutely amazing. All right, I'm gonna put it back together and star up. So I put the dash back together and to figure out how to do that, just watch this video in reverse. I fixed the last few niggles, the droopy sun visor, that was a new sun visor, well, secondhand sun visor from a scrapyard, put that in, and same with the glove box. The broken door of the glove box, that was replaced with a new glove box, again, from a scrapyard, nice and cheap, nice and easy, there was a couple bolts. After that, gave her a good clean and put her up for sale. Turned a healthy profit and now she's got a new life to be someone's first car all over again.